Hugs, hearts united, gather strength. Because we don't get over it. But sometimes we need help getting on with it. Available on Amazon. Link in the description. We are on chapter four. A letter to say goodbye. Papaw's girl. Dear Papaw, I haven't seen you in a while, so I thought I'd just write you a little letter to catch you up to speed on recent events. I met my dad for the first time that I could remember a few years back. You were right. He is a wonderful man. Sometimes he comes on a little strong, but he means well and has a heart of gold. He is one of the few people I know that will stand up for what is right, just like you used to. Then there were smaller milestones, getting my license, proms, my first job, etc. I was given the most beautiful baby girl whose eyes sparkle when she laughs. I met the man I'll soon call my husband back in high school and have been crazy in love ever since. He's a good man. I know you'd approve. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll be saving you a seat in the front row at the wedding. I sure do miss those hugs of yours. That last one was a doozy. Do you remember? You picked me up, clean off my feet. I won't keep you. I know you must have important things to do since the boss called you in so early. Just wanted you to know I'm thinking about you. I love you. See you soon. XOXO, Papaw's girl. This young lady and her papaw were very close. She was very young when he passed away. Due to circumstances beyond her control, she wasn't able to see him in the last couple of years of his life. She never forgot him or the love he had for her. As I said, in this second grief book, we experience grief in many ways. Um, not just the loss of, loss of loved ones, um, but our homes, our jobs. Um, and this is a story about being homeless. Chapter 5. We normally associate grieving with losing a loved one, even a pet, but rarely do we realize the other things we grieve for, including losing your home. I'm not talking about moving, although that may cause us to grieve to some extent. I'm talking about literally being put out of your home and having no place to go. This next story is about just such an event in a young couple's life. My wife and I got behind on the bills, including our rent. I had gotten laid off my job and was struggling to find work. My friends and family had helped all they could. After a couple of months, we were evicted. We took all of our belongings and put them in storage and headed to a relative of my wife's. We didn't know what else to do. My wife seemed to live in her own creative world and decided this was going to be an adventure. I, on the other hand, was stressing over money, putting a roof over our head, and felt downright worthless. As a man, providing for my family was everything to my self-esteem. I started to sink further and further into depression. My wife kept assuring me that everything would be all right. I wasn't so sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. I contemplated getting a divorce. That's right. Jumping ship and hightailing it back to my own family. That just wouldn't be right. She was in this mess with me and I couldn't leave her to drown in it. My wife got the idea of buying a tent and camping it out for the summer until we got on our feet. It wasn't the worst idea I've ever heard and motel rooms were costing money we just didn't have. We were lucky if we got to eat every day. Some days it wasn't more than a bologna sandwich. So we invested the rest of our money in a decent tent and air mattress and found a campground for, can you believe it, only $5 a night. <clears throat> Excuse me. We paid for a week and I discovered one of those places that pay you by the day. They send you on odd jobs. It wasn't much, but it did feed us and keep gas in the car. 
Every day my wife would occupy herself at the campground, riding, walking, cleaning our tent, sweeping our campsite, and praying. I could see depression setting in on her as well, so I forced myself out of my slump for her sake. It went on like that for a few weeks. We take turns lifting each other up. The heat was unbearable, and we had to do something to get out of it. The trees provided shade, but did nothing for relief from the humidity. I found one of those places to donate plasma. Again, it wasn't a lot of money, but I had to get us out of the heat and back into a motel room. My wife was great at finding resources, and she found us a place for about $30 a night. This left us again with barely enough to eat on. We knew it couldn't go on like this, and saving money was impossible. I had been applying for jobs all over, anywhere, anything. We caught a break when I got hired on a construction job. I still had to donate plasma when I could to keep us in the motel room until I got my first paycheck. With it, we rented a house from a landlord who worked with us on the deposit and first month's rent. Every week, we made rent our priority, and eventually we got caught up and could breathe. We have never forgotten those days in the tent, and we don't want to, because it reminds us to keep our eye on the ball and never take the roof over our heads for granted. <clears throat> then this is my commentary. Not many couples would have stuck together through such an ordeal. How terrified they must have been. Can you imagine losing everything you have and living in a tent? <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me. And not knowing if you were going to eat or not? What would you have done? Sounds to me like the very basic instinct of survival kicked in, and they did what they had to do. I also see that love pulled them through. I love how they took turns encouraging one another. It's like that sometimes when we grieve. If you're a couple and you've experienced a loss, you may need to take turns uplifting each other while the other takes time to feel the pain and the loss. I am encouraged myself at their strength and their unwillingness to give in to their situation. They fought hard just to survive, and it paid off for them.